Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Uh, working on increasing and improving the uh, production values here on the channel, so bear with me. The audio should be a little bit better this time because I'm recording it separately, but we'll see how it goes. Um, anyways, great start to a video, right? Today we're going to talk a little bit about splits in NeoVim, or this will also work in Vim, this will also apply to Vim, but we're going to be working on... Um, the NeoVim config we've been building from scratch for the last few videos in this series. And we're going to be doing it in Ubuntu. So let's go ahead and switch over to the screen here. All right, so I've CD'd into the NVim configuration file, or directory. And basically what we're going to be doing is talking about splits and how to manage them, how to make them work better than they would in default. So. Splits are something that will work out of the box in a certain way. So if we just open up Vim here, oops, I, I keep forgetting that I don't have my aliases here, so in Vim. We open up this and we, we close a nerd tree because we don't need that. And we just type in ver vertical, I think that'll work, oops, it must be VS. Yeah, there we go. That's what a split looks like. Um, basically, it just allows you to use these two um, Vim windows as if they're one. So it also allows you to yank text from one split to another, um, delete things and copy them into the other buffer. Um, and that's not something you can do if you had... So let's say you close this out. Um... Wow, um, Ubuntu sucks. Um, let's say you close that out, and you had two. two oh, I miss. <laughs> I I miss having key bindings. Anyways, if you had two, and you had, you couldn't easily copy text in between these two unless you had sp something specific like X clip or something set up, in order to do so. So. It also helps you when you want to just have two similar files side by side without having to have multiple crappy windows open up like this. Um, oh, because I have a, I have a. Well, talk about <laughs> talk about not responding. All right, all right. Anyways, so let's go ahead and talk about how we can make splits better because. The way it works out of the box are some really weird key bindings. So if we cd into dot configs and vim and cd into bindings and s and and then key bindings. Okay. Make that a little bit smaller so it actually doesn't take up the whole screen. Um and right now this is the only key binding I have changed. And that that's that just toggles nerd tree. Um, by default, if I were to open up a vertical split here, it would, to get back and forth between these two, you have to do control W and then W again. That's very intuitive, right? Control W and then W again. Control W, W again. That is trash. So let's control W, W again. Oops, control W, W again. And we just quit this out. And that's not, that's just not great, right? So the first thing I would change, we'll just create some lines here because we want this above, is, and I'm just going to copy and paste this. These will also be in the description. If we just control V into these. So basically what this does is, is, is changes control W into just control J, K, L, and H. These are just the Vim keys. Um, so if we write this, And we control out of this and then just go back into it again. And we open up a reverse vertical split. Now we can press control J or H and L to go back and forth. There's no weird extra key that we had to prick for ease. You can see how, how I'm switching back and forth with the, how the cursor switches back and forth. See this? Oops. 
and that's just back and forth. Now, you, splits don't have to be vertical. They can also be horizontal. So if you just type split, um, I think this is the way. It, uh, yeah, it's... And see, I, now I have an, a, a one like this, and I can move up and down by J and K. Now, let's say I wanted to open up a specific file. So let's control... Uh, get out of some of these. Let's open up a vertical split of dot config. So tilde slash dot config and then general settings of them. Okay? And that just takes us into our general settings config file. And now we have both of them open at the same time. Very easy, right? Now, hold on a second, I'm gonna have to cough. <coughs> I've been doing that a lot lately. Uh, <laughs> it's just a cold. I'm okay. Anyway, so let's say we wanted to do change the uh, how much one of these splits takes up on the screen. So you can, I believe, take this and drag it. Um, but we're not Neanderthals here. We don't use mice. We use key bindings. So if you want to increase the width you have to do control w and then the pipe symbol maybe that's that, that increased the width a little bit too much i believe uh, um because that split is still there so control w and then the pipe symbol actually makes it takes up the whole screen i did not know that i never use that but that's the way that works you can also Let's say you've done that, control W, and then the pipe symbol. You can get it back to normal by pressing control W and the equal sign, supposedly. Oh, that's because I'm done. Control W and then equals. No, that still doesn't work. Control W and then equals. Yeah, there we go. Just had to have it. And that's, as you can tell, that is also a horrible way of getting things set up, but I'm not, I've never gone through and rebinded those because I don't use those that often. Because when I do this, let's, let's, um, let's get out of this and create a new vertical split. So let's just say we want to, um, create a specific size when we open this. So if we do a 40, vs and then a dot tilde slash dot config oops can't type as you can see now this took uh, it let the main um, window take up 60 and this took up 40 and you can do that when you, it's just four, the, the, so the 40 is the the percentage of the screen that the new split will take up. So if I, I could, I could control quit out of this again. And, oops, I could quit the wrong one, but it doesn't matter. We just do, say 10 VS tilde slash not config. Uh, and see, and that took up 10% of the screen. Not obviously that's unusable, but it's you know there. And then you can control W and you know the and there are other bindings that I don't have written down in my outline that would actually go through and make make this um you know usable. That because that control W pipe sign is is a dumb is a dumb thing, but you get the point. Um, I will also inc include some link links where you can sh find some other bindings that are basically in use. So let's say I wanted to swap the left and right. Let's say I wanted to switch these back and forth. They're the same file right now, but let's just say I want to do that. So I do Control W and then Capital R. Let's actually open up a different file. So let's see, 30 vs dot let's see tilde slash dot config 
NVIM um, key bindings. Oops, it was it's bindings. Okay, so let's say I wanted to switch these back and forth. It's, it's Control W, capital R. And that switches the place. And it works with the, the horizontal split as well. So let's just say I want to create a split of, um, I don't know, tilde slash config and then init rc init.vim. Okay, and then we can do control w r capital R, and that will switch them back up and top. Um, so that's how those switch things. You know, you can break, let's just say we wanted to make this one here, this bit, oops. Uh oh. <laughs> you can tell I don't use Ubuntu. Oops, and I pressed the type, the, type the wrong password in. Okay. <laughs> Super L locks the screen on Ubuntu. The more you know. Anyways, let's just say um, we wanted to go through and make this main one here um, full screen, but I didn't want to lose the other splits. We can do Control W Capital T, and that breaks basically breaks it out in two tabs. So you can, our other two splits are still here, but in this buffer here is now full size. Um, and Let's go ahead and close this out. Let's just say we wanted to keep, let's say we had a, another vertical split and another split here and we had all these. So we, we wanted to close every split except for the one that's active. So we do that by control W and small O. And that closes the rest of them. Now remember, that doesn't automatically save. So if you have work in those other, other splits, you have to save them first. Um, you can also obviously um, save them, save things by doing Shift ZZ or colon WQ or any of the other innumerable ways you quit out of them. I mean, there's just so many different ways. All right, so where do you find all this stuff? That's the question. So if you do colon help and splits, this will bring you to the splits help page. Um, and there are um, a lot of a lot of different um, lots of different information that you can get out of this. It's it's a very actually long thing, and I'm not going to go through the whole thing because you can get to this and just read it yourself. But it'll also show you how to do several different things. So um, we will quit out of that, and we will. Control get out of them completely. Now let's just say we wanted to open up a split from the terminal itself. So we can do that by doing nvim dash um, o, I believe this will do vertical splits. Um, I'm not sure, I can't go, okay, that's first let's cd into up, up a level. So nvim dash o and then we want init dot vim and slash general and settings dot vim and that should open up if I've done this right it in a horizontal so small o does it in a horizontal split so we to get rid of nerd tree and you can see we got a horizontal split so let's close that and do the same thing but with a capital O and that gives us a vertical split. And again, just close nurture, and we have a 50-50. That's how you can do. You can open up splits, two files in splits directly from the terminal. And that's something I didn't know until I looked it up. Now, one of the things, um, let me see if I can find this again. So, 
let's just reopen this up here, okay? And, and we'll close one of these. If you notice when you open up a vertical split of, let's just say, uh, general and settings. If you, the way splits usually work by default, the new file that you just opened up will actually appear over here. Um, but that's not really all that great. So basically what you want to do is in your standard settings file, uh, you want this line here. Set split below, split right. Basically what that means is any split that you open will automatically have appear on the right side or the bottom instead of the de default behavior which is the left side and the top. Um, now if that doesn't bother you, you don't have to change it. But for the most part, especially in English speaking places, people read, you know, left or right. And things appearing on the right, you know, or the left or you know, whatever, it, it's just, it comes across a little awkward. Um, so, um, the last thing I want to talk about was the two commands in, in here, just real quick. So if you do, you notice how I did VS. Um, you can also do VSP, which is the same as VS, or you can also do SP, which is for horizontal. Um, you, and then it's just, the syntax is just a, is just add the file name you want to open up in the split, and that will open up the file. Now, if you leave no file, it'll just open up a copy of the file you're already viewing. Uh, so remember that whatever one you're working in, you'll need to make saves changes to that file, not the other one. They just open. Otherwise, if you have two that are exactly the same, but you've made changes in one and not the other, and you save one and not the one you actually made the changes in, it can get messy and makes you start losing things. So that's just the very basic things that splits can do. Um, in another video, I believe the next video in the series I'm going to do, I'm going to talk a little bit more about key bindings, and I'm going to do a little bit of research in, on how to, because uh, there are um, better ways to change the sizes other than th that weird control W, you know, underscore thing, which seems to makes the focused split 100% but leaves the other one still there, which, because I mean, this lets you move between them, but you can't use the top one because it's barely visible. Um, but I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to do some research and see how to change those key bindings because I've only done it once in my own and I can't quite remember how I did it because, of course, I stole it from somebody else, which is the way things work on the internet. I mean, obviously. Anyways, I will leave the link to a couple of tutorials that are really good that have all these key bindings in them in the description. I will also leave a, a link to my GitHub repository where you can find this work in progress made from scratch NVIM configuration so you can download it yourself. I know I, <laughs> this is me being hypocritical, but I would go through the way we've been doing it and follow these instructions and build it yourself. You'll feel better about it because I use for my main configuration file I use somebody else's and I get confused a lot because it's not you know it has different you know key bindings that I'm not used to and I have to go through and search it through stuff anyways but that's up to you anyways I'll leave those links in the description thanks for watching um, well just uh, I'm using OBS so I'm a little bit <laughs> Uh, normally I use simple screen recorder. I've moved up in the world. So um, I hope you like the slightly better production values. Um, and if you think that I should start using a camera to show my face on these things, let me know. I do have a camera. I'm just a little camera shy. Um, let me know in the comments. Get a subscribe, thumbs up, thumbs down, all that stuff. Uh, and thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.